Hello, uh, I'm Nawrez Mahmoud, Iraq's Child Protection Subcluster Co-Coordinator, contributed by Save the Children International, and I have today with me my colleague Salah. Hello, my name is Salah Hassan, NENO Child Protection Working Group Co-Coordinator, contributed by Algad Organization. Uh, today we will be talking about uh, localization in child protection coordination in Iraq. Um, uh, in the beginning of the year, contributed organization to the subcluster nationalized the co-coordinator position. And as a result, I joined the subcluster team. We have also all uh, our coordinators on the subnational level are national staff. Majority of them contributed by a national organization. Seven of them are coming from national organization and three of them contributed by government. And the rest of them contributed by Save the Children International and UNICEF. In the recent years, we have also increased the seats uh, in the SAG. Uh, now we have three national organizations as SAG members in the subcluster. We have also started to translate uh, key documents, email, meeting, meeting minutes to local languages. In the beginning of the year, uh, we had a different plan for rolling out the localization uh, in country. Uh, one of them was adapting the competency framework. But then uh, with the coronavirus, we needed to shift and to change to remote modality. This was also another uh, challenge for a uh, national organization that they were not very much familiar with using technology. We created some tutorial videos in local languages on how they can use uh, online platforms for meeting and for uh, remote uh, uh, working. Uh, on uh, building the capacity of the coordinators, we had an uh, assessment, uh, a capacity assessment for the coordinators. And based on the result of this assessment, we know more about the strength and for area and areas for improvement in each coordinator. And bilaterally with each one of them, we developed a personalized capacity building plan. Uh, at the same time, we also compiled uh, uh, different online uh, trainings, which are available on uh, Kaya platform uh, or Disaster Ready uh, or the Alliance's website as well. And we share the list with the coordinators and they select those that fits well with the capacity building plan. Um, after um, these, we also uh, started to conduct uh, training session and coaching session regularly. And uh, in the coaching session, we focus on the uh, well-being of the coordinators and the operation side of the CP coordination uh, and also follow up on the training that they are taking. Salah will tell us more about the coaching experience. Thank you, Nora. Uh, for the coaching assessment, in fact, it was very important for me uh, because it was uh, as a first step and it helped me and supported me to highlight and address where should I improve my uh, capacities and experience. And during the capacity building plan, in fact, I found it that it was, uh, it, contained, uh, it contains a very uh, important links of online training uh, courses uh, that I have been participating uh, in order to uh, improve my uh, knowledge and capacities as well. And for the coaching sessions, uh, in fact, they are also so important and helped me in uh, managing and leading uh, the NANO Child Protection Working Group regular monthly meetings, uh, in addition to increasing the capacities of the coordinations with the CP actors here in NANO. Uh, we also faced some challenges, of course. One of them is the, um, the coordinators uh, find it difficult to dedicate 20% of the time to the CP coordination because the national organization put extra tasks uh, to the most, its most capable staff. Um, another challenge that we have is the uh, turnover, staff turnover, that we lost some of our coordinators due to shortage of uh, budgets. Uh, this is an opportunity for uh, donors and international organizations to support uh, and contribute more to CP coordination and also support the uh, infrastructure of national organization so they can support to uh, funding opportunities directly. 
On the steps forward, we continue uh, this uh, step that we have already started and the materials that we have now and the tools that we have in country can be used elsewhere and in other responses uh, and we will uh, remain open also to new opportunities. Thank you. Hello, I'm Susanna Davis, Senior Humanitarian Coordinator with Save the Children. Save the Children is committed to localization and to delivering on the promises of the grand bargain. By shifting greater capacity, means, and ownership to national and local actors, we believe humanitarian response can deliver more and better fulfill the rights of children. Over the past year, Save the Children has been investing in localization in humanitarian child protection coordination. As the most frequent NGO co-lead, we are using our access and expertise in humanitarian coordination to open doors for national actors. Our collaborative approach works together with national NGOs in Iraq and South Sudan to deliver technical and institutional capacity building, provide financial and in-kind support, and develop tools and videos to demystify coordination processes. When COVID-19 hit, we focused on providing immediate financial and in-kind support to help national actors continue to participate in and lead coordination groups. We also translated new technical guidance and tools into local languages and provided one-to-one -one and group coaching for national NGOs. Many national actors took on greater leadership roles in the pandemic and continue to guide subnational groups today. Save the Children is now expanding this initiative to a further five countries in West and Central Africa. Together with the Child Protection Area of Responsibility, Street Child, and our national partners, we are combining lessons learned to develop a toolkit to support increased localization and coordination across diverse humanitarian responses. National actors can and should lead humanitarian coordination mechanisms. We hope Alliance members will join us to explore how to drive forward localization in the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. We are best positioned to be able to carry out projects and to offer sustainability. It's not rocket science. We are going to be here forever. So it's only fair that we are given the opportunity to state our role and to determine what our future should look like. This is a quote from a local representative who participated in the assessment of the Child Protection Area of Responsibility Localization Initiative in 2019. My name is Fatuma Ibrahim. I work with the CPOR and I focus on localization. Now, after the World Humanitarian Summit in 2016, the CPOR started taking practical steps to implement localization in protection coordination. This included one, the establishment of the CPR Global Strategic Advisory Group that includes eight national representatives, the first global coordination group to do so. Two, providing accessible support through Arabic, English, French, and Spanish help desks. Three, strengthening government capacity for coordination. And four, building local institutional capacity. Since 2019, the CPR, Save the Children, and Street Child UK have patterned to implement a localization initiative which aims to, one, increase the number of local organizations in coordination leadership positions, two, improve institutional capacity, three, build capacity in coordination and service provision, four, increase access to funding and governance reform, and five, to generate evidence on the impact of localization. You'd be hearing more about the good practices and lessons learned during the panel discussion. Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic has created a heavy reliance on local actors because of the reduced footprints of international actors. Hence, empowering local actors is an imperative for effective response. As such, the Child Protection Area of Responsibility remains committed to working with partners and to advocating with others to accelerate localization in coordination. 